Over the past week and a half or so, I've noticed a confluence of rumors and leaks that give me some concern about where we're headed with Apple Silicon. So I figured in today's video, I wanna talk about a bit of brain drain that's going on at Apple, the iPhone 14 Pro GPU with ray tracing that never made it to production, the 15 inch MacBook Air, the M2 MacBook Pro, and a new Apple Silicon Mac Pro. Yeah, a lot to go over in this video, so let's get started right away. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the number one tool for building your beautiful online presence. So I'd like to start with a really bombshell report that came out just a couple of days ago from The Information. Now their information suggests that iPhone 14 Pro had an unprecedented setback, which led to the removal of a new GPU. And honestly, Apple's GPUs have been something of interest to me because we're all, I think, pretty aware that TSMC and Apple are working on three nanometer chips for next generation Apple Silicon. But what does that mean for the GPU? Well, apparently for this year, Apple's engineers were, quote, too ambitious in adding new features to the graphics processor for the iPhone 14 Pro, including ray tracing. Bro, we almost had ray tracing on a freaking iPhone. Now, as cool as that sounds, I can't say that I'm surprised that a feature like that was too ambitious. This report is claiming that iPhone 14 Pro prototypes had way more power draw and way less battery life and thermal management. That makes sense because you're talking about a phone. It has to be able to be cooled passively even if you're running it at full balls to the walls performance. And ray tracing isn't exactly an efficient process. But not only was this GPU too ambitious, Apple didn't even discover it until late in the development cycle, which meant they had to really quickly go back to essentially the same GPU they've been using all along. And that's why the GPU performance in the iPhone 14 Pro is not that great. And honestly, this whole thing gives us some really interesting insight into quite possibly one of the biggest development blunders that none of us even really knew was happening because Apple's so secretive. The report details this unprecedented misstep in Apple's chip design history and also reveals how the chip design team has been forced to contend with a loss of talent in recent years. And this is honestly something that is going to have ramifications in the future. If you look at the period of time between 2016 and 2020, Apple had an insane four years of just crazy chips being pumped out year over year. 2016 is when the Fusion chip launched, and that was their first big little chip design. It had two performance and two efficiency cores, and it could switch between them, but not use both. Then the year after that, we had the Bionic chip design, where performance and efficiency cores could work together in a six core chip. And then we also had in 2018, the A12X, which was the predecessor to M1, which really stepped up the performance into PC level. And then of course, the M1 chip, which smokes even that. Like, that is a crazy amount of things to have going on in a four year span. But if you look at where we're at right now, it's been two years since the M1 chip came out. The M2 is a very minor increase in performance at best. Things have definitely slowed down a little bit and I think that's in large part due to the fact that a lot of Apple's top talent has been poached. Now that's not to say that Apple Silicon Macs going forward are going to be bad. For example, we've got this rumor of a 15.5 inch MacBook Air, which is expected to launch in spring of 2023. And that's a very credible rumor. I mean, this comes from Ross Young, who is pretty much undisputed as the king of accuracy. And a 15.5 inch MacBook Air is something that wasn't really possible under Intel, or I guess it would have been, but it probably wouldn't have been as nice, but it makes a ton of sense here. And Apple Silicon, whether it's an M1, an M2, an M3, or what have you, it's going to be a really, really great sweet spot. In fact, it's such a good sweet spot that I've been working with today's video sponsor, Squarespace, for months now, trying to petition Apple to make this exact MacBook. 
I've been customizing Squarespace's awesome templates and their easy graphical UI means I can just drag and drop elements around the page. You don't need to use any scripting or coding or anything like that. I don't know how to do any of that. So clicking and dragging, that's the way to go. With Squarespace's powerful website builder, I've been able to make newsletters to send out to some of my most ardent supporters. And I can even set up a merch page super easily where I can sell some 15 inch MacBook themed merchandise. Squarespace makes all of these things super easy. You can build your website, build your online store, even make member areas to unlock special features like tutorials or bonus content for your most loyal fans. So if you're interested in getting started with Squarespace, check out the link in the description below. And when you're ready to buy your first website or domain, you can use code LUKEMIANI to save 10%. And now let's get back into the rumors and specifically this 15 inch MacBook Air. Now, previously we heard it was gonna be a 15.2 inch display, but now Young is saying it's gonna be 15.5. That's ever so slightly bigger than the old 15 inch MacBook Pro. That was 15.4. And I think this is a really, really promising form factor. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Butterfly Keyboard 15 inch MacBook Pro was flawed in many, many, many ways, but the one thing that it got right was being a great portable form factor. And bringing that back with Apple Silicon, especially fanless M2 chips, well, that just sounds like a fantastic deal, especially if it's gonna cost around maybe 15 or 1600 bucks. In fact, it's possibly more exciting than where things currently stand for the next generation of 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Apple is working on these new versions, but these seem like they're gonna be very minor updates after uh, the big redesign last year. That I think makes a lot of sense. That's not something that you're gonna see happening every year, more like every four or five or six years. But what we do know is that we're looking at an M2 Pro and M2 Max chip. And this is where the Apple Silicon brain drain comes into play because honestly, the M2 chip is nothing really crazy. If you have an M1 MacBook Air, you probably don't need an M2 MacBook Air. Mark Gurman says that the M2 Max they've been using for testing has a 12 core CPU, which gives it about 14% more performance than the M1 Max. So to me, that indicates that the chips in these new MacBooks are not in fact on the new three nanometer architecture because we're increasing our core count, most likely by way of adding efficiency cores, and it's only getting 14% more performance. That doesn't sound like a brand new architecture to me. That's probably not gonna be compelling to that many people, which really puts the spotlight on 2024 or maybe the end of 2023, when we do finally start to get some three nanometer chips. And that's really when we get to find out what the pace for Apple Silicon's development has been. We have heard recently that TSMC is celebrating the production of three nanometer chips starting, and some people still seem to think that this is going to be in these new MacBook Pros, but I'm a little bit more skeptical. Just because they're starting manufacturing of this new process doesn't mean that, you know, two months later, we get MacBooks with those in them. I don't think that's very likely, but could we see something revealed at WWDC? Quite possibly. And this probably means that three nanometer will come sooner than later. One thing that has been perpetually bugging me is since M2 is such a relatively minor upgrade over M1, it, it seems like a weird time to be going all the way up to an M2 Ultra and then doing like this extreme version for a Mac Pro. This is really a minor refresh on a two-year-old chip. So why would you be launching a Mac Pro with this? Well, German thinks they're not going to. He says an M2 Extreme chip has been canceled, but testing for the all new Mac Pro is still ongoing. Now he does say that he's expecting a 24 core CPU and a 76 core GPU and at least 192 gigs of RAM, which kind of sounds like an M2, but I really don't see that happening. I see Apple releasing an M2 Pro and Max in the 14 and 16 inch, releasing a 15 inch MacBook Air also with M2 and maybe M2 Pro. And then by the time we get to WWDC, we'd be looking at full steam ahead on M3, revealing the design, giving us a taste of the M3 chip. 
And then that will probably take another seven to 10 to 12 months to propagate all the way up to a Mac Pro. So I think that a lot of what we're seeing here is explaining the delays. Why don't we have an M2 Mac mini? Why don't we have a Mac Pro? Why don't we have a 27 or 30 inch iMac? This is what happens when Apple makes an engineering misstep. They try to make a GPU with ray tracing for an iPhone and at the last minute go, oh no, that's, we can't do that. Now, hopefully all that ray tracing engineering won't go to waste. After all, you don't need to worry about battery life and cooling as much in, well, I don't know, a Mac Pro, for example. But I think 2023 is going to be a critical year because that's when we are going to find out whether Apple has the chops to keep Apple Silicon on pace to keep up with the competition. I'm hopeful that they will do it. They always seem to pull something out of their bag, but only time will tell. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I will catch you in the next one.